time, we'd like to welcome Yale, Yale McGuire from Facebook Connectivity to deliver our morning keynote address. Yale is Vice President Engineering Connectivity at Facebook. He's been with Facebook since 2012 and helped launch Facebook's connectivity efforts where Magma was developed. Please join me in welcoming Yale. Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, I can see that there are people from different parts of the world, so it may not be a good morning for everybody, but uh, over here in San Francisco, it is it is a nice morning. So I really wanna welcome you all. It's so exciting to see how many developers are uh, here, and I really hope you have a fantastic day. As Phil mentioned, and thank you for the introduction, I, I've been at Facebook for over eight years and have been involved with this connectivity mission. And uh, it really has been the honor of a lifetime to be able to work on this. So I'm really excited to be able to share a little bit about um, the background, why we are focused on this, and then get to uh, probably what is the most exciting thing, which is the announcement today. So just as a little bit of background, connectivity is at the heart of Facebook's mission to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. High quality internet access gives people a voice and opportunities to share knowledge that can strengthen local communities and global economies. And it's an essential ingredient to ensuring access to jobs, education, healthcare, and more. And you know, this is why I come back to this point of feeling like this has been an honor of a, of a lifetime. To be able to help provide support for uh, these communities around the world has just been, it's been awesome. So to kick it off, let's start with some good news. We're gonna look at some of the global statistics around internet access. Global access to the internet is improving. Average household connectivity has risen by a staggering 45% over the past five years. Mobile connectivity has also become more accessible. I think everybody knows that 4G is increasing in, in utilization and coverage around the world. And that coverage grew in 54 countries and now covers 65% of lower middle income countries. Now, some of these stats may be um, surprising or people weren't aware of them. You know, you know I live in, in the United States in California and I think people, I find a lot of people think, oh, connectivity is everywhere. There are digital divides everywhere in the United States uh, and certainly in emerging economies. So I hope these um, stats provide some perspective for you all. So while now, here's some of the, 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 uh, the other sides of this. So while access to the internet and 4G speeds have continued to improve, the speed of those networks is forecast to decline for 3.3 billion people in developing and emerging markets, roughly, and they represent roughly about three quarters of the world's population. This is effectively gonna create a new kind of digital divide where some parts of the population are gonna have differentiated rich content like we're enjoying right now, real-time video, augmented reality experiences, and unfortunately others are not. This isn't good for our peers in the industry or the mobile ecosystem, but this also has massive economic implications for people in developing and emerging markets. And that's why Facebook connectivity is focused on enabling better broadband connectivity with the goal of bringing more people online to a faster internet. Ultimately, we believe connectivity is good for companies and industries of all kinds, including Facebook. We believe being connected opens up new opportunities. It's opportunities to make yourself heard, to connect with people and communities you care about, and to build new businesses. Let's go to the next slide, thank you. And you'll see some of the stats on sort of what um, the implications for society at large are. The importance of reliable, affordable internet co connectivity has never been more important than it is today. The coronavirus pandemic, what has made it so that we are doing this over Zoom as opposed to actually meeting face-to-face, -face, has upended the lives of people in every corner of the globe. But thanks to the internet, we've seen incredible stories of people shifting their lives online, including this conference, from telehealth, remote work, distance learning, to virtual concerts, weddings, and graduation ceremonies. The internet is also critical in helping people access healthcare information about how to stay safe 
and present the, prevent the spread of coronavirus within their communities. But this pandemic has also shed new light on the growing digital divide. More than 3.5 billion people around the world remain unconnected to the internet. You know, at this point globally, there's roughly 90% of people that if they had access to a phone, if they had interest in connecting to the internet and it was affordable, they could connect, but yet there's still 3.5 billion people who are unconnected. The pandemic did not create the digital divide, but it has exposed how large the divide actually is. And it further underscores the importance of our work for our mission to enable better um, internet for the world. Next slide, please. So at Facebook Connectivity, our team of engineers and experts around the world work closely with partners, including mobile network operators, equipment manufacturers, nonprofits, and more to develop programs and technologies that increase the availability. So trying to get that 90% as, as to 100% affordability and awareness of high quality internet access. We are, those are the challenges that we think remain to make it so that everybody has access to some type of device that they can connect, it's affordable and that they believe the internet is actually relevant for them and can make it an impact in a positive way for their life. We collaborate with the industry to make data-driven choices about where to deploy capacity, how to optimize network designs and deployments, how to reduce costs, which include both the operational side as well as the capital side, and how to drive efficiency through innovation. Now, this one is important. We believe there is no silver bullet for connecting the world. There is not a single technology or program that will help get the job done. To me, I'll be honest, this is the most important lesson that I have learned over the last eight years. And this is especially true when it comes to connectivity gaps and infrastructure needs that vary so widely across different regions between cities, rural communities. So rather than look for a one size fits all solution, we're focused on investing on building block strategies, almost like Legos. We design and test different types of connectivity programs and technologies that can fit together to make solutions. Next slide, please. And to make it obviously relevant for today, one of those key technologies that we're working on is of course, Magma. And as Phil introduced, Magma is an open source software platform to enable network operators to have open, flexible and extensible mobile network uh, at the core. And we open sourced the code for Magma at MWC 2019. The project has gained tremendous traction in the industry it is quickly becoming the packet core of choice for operators and system integrators around the globe, which makes me very, very happy to see this very, very important building block get developed and to be here today. So let's get into some of the use cases of Magma. Uh, and you're gonna hear about a lot more of these uh, today. So to touch on a couple of them. Uh, so Brisanet, which is the third largest fiber broadband provider in Brazil, with over 650,000 subscribers, is starting to roll out Magma-based fixed wireless access offerings to 400 rural communities across the northeastern states of Brazil. A second example, and this one's a little bit of a, a lot of whiz in it. So with Connect or Y Connect Wireless, a, a WISP located in Wisconsin is using Magma to create its own CBRS-based private network. With Magma, Y-Connect is able to reach new customers and offer connection speeds rarely seen in rural Wisconsin's side of the digital divide. Mirantis is using Magma to enable mobile network operators to offload cellular data at the network edge. And finally, but certainly not least, uh, Airtel, or Airtel, a fast growing internet service provider in central West Brazil is using Magma to provide LTE services to the Dorados municipality. We've also successfully completed interoperability tests with eNodeBs of leading RAN vendors, including Bicells Technologies and Airspan, while adding several important features such as zero touch provisioning and hitless upgrades. And again, I'm hoping you're gonna learn all about those today. 
Next slide, please. So this morning, the Linux Foundation announced that an open source industry collaboration with Magma to accelerate the deployment of wireless networks. We had previously open sourced Magma as an incubation project, project in 2019. The announcement today means the platform will now be managed under a neutral governance framework at the Linux Foundation. Now for me, as a personal, uh, on a personal note, this is really exciting. Uh, uh, over actually eight years ago, I was uh, helping a, a, a project get launched at Facebook, another open community called the Open Compute Project. And working with colleagues, one of the um, organizations that we were most inspired by in thinking about the governance model and structure of the Open Compute Project was the Linux Foundation. So to see this sort of come full circle with Magma to me is uh, really, really exciting to see. So we're also really excited to see other open source communities join this collaboration today, including the Open Infrastructure Foundation and the Open Air Interfaces Software Alliance. There's also a number of Magma community members who are also collaborating in the Telecom Infrastructure Project's Open Core Network Project Group to define, build, test, and deploy core network products that leverage Magma software alongside disaggregated hardware and software solutions by the TIP Open Core ecosystem. TIP's Open Core project, which Facebook helped launch last year, is working with multiple MNOs to align on use cases, technical requirements for open and cloud native core solutions, and aggregating demand through operator led lab and field trials and through RFIs and RFPs. So what's Facebook Connectivity's role gonna be going forward? Well, we're gonna to continue to provide technical oversight. We wanna continue the development and leadership for Magma. We will also continue to work with service providers, system integrators and OEMs to deploy Magma at scale so that we can fulfill our mission of bringing more people online to a faster internet. And we're gonna really focus on fixed wireless access and private network use cases. So as the Magma developer ecosystem continues to grow, we look forward to how others can help contribute to Magma success. So it's uh, really in your court, but we're really excited what happens today and in the future. And so with that, I'd like to close and thank you again for your time today. I'm gonna pass it back to the team who's gonna share their thoughts on today's announcement. So I really hope you have a fantastic day to you all. Thank you.